the sun's just beginning to rise at Flemington. The horses rest after a session of track work. Saab Hassan moves from box to box, checking for soreness and injury. He hasn't had a day off in 12 years. But training horses is the only thing he's ever wanted to do. I came to him one day and said, Grandad, Grandad, I know what I want to be. And he said, well, what's that, son? And I said, I want to be a horse trainer. And he said, well, where does that come from? And he said, we've only got two donkeys in Cyprus. His early childhood was idyllic, raised by his Turkish Cypriot grandparents on a small farm in Limassol, Cyprus. But in 1974, everything changed. We became a prisoner in our own country. Um, there was a lot of unrest between the Greeks and the Turks. And um, as a result, we were... We were um, detained uh, in our village, we couldn't go out. The Greek military junta launched a coup to overthrow the president. Turkish forces invaded. The children and elderly in Saab's village were taken to refugee camps. We were all lay laying down watching the bullets go over our heads and the bombs exploding. Um, and one of my uh, f fondest memories of my mum was her um, singing to us and whispering to us, go to sleep, good night, everything's going to be all right. Um, and she'd, you know, all of a sudden you'd, you'd, you'd feel a bomb whizzling past uh, the airways and she'd throw herself on top of you to protect you. Cyprus was divided. Turkish forces taking over the northeastern portion of the island. Saab and his family left everything to flee north over the border. Fearing more conflict, the family decided to flee to Australia. All I knew it was hot um, and we're going to come here and work and go back home. So I said, well, hurry up, let's get over and done so I can get back home. Fate stepped in. Just weeks after arriving, five-year-old Saab would listen as the radio broadcast the 1976 Melbourne Cup taking place across the road. Well, we landed um, at Flemington, which is known as the uh, heart of the Melbourne Cup. So I think maybe my destiny was chosen. But the road would be long and difficult, beginning with a first day at school. I was like the little wog boy that um, took his cucumber and half a watermelon and hulumi cheese and half a loaf of bread and uh, I was taught to share so um, the Aussie kid just stared at me and thought, well, what's that? We've got meat pies. He took solace in his love for animals. As a teen, he sought work in a stable, refused by every trainer. He wouldn't take no for an answer. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just started working and the bloke come in and he said, well, what are you doing? And I said, I'm your new worker. He said, well, I'm the boss. I haven't hired you. I said, well, it's just bad luck. I said, I'm your new worker. So um, his name was Mick Sirk and he gave me my first break. He learnt the business from the masters, Sadler, Hayes, Cummings, before branching out on his own in 2004, living a dream decades in the making. The next step, returning to the Melbourne Cup, not as a spectator, but as a competitor. If I can just compete in the Melbourne Cup and, and, and see that synonymous um, Arabic Muslim surname, Hassan, in the paper, in the Melbourne Cup, would be, would be awesome. It would be, it would be just telling Australia, look, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Abby Dinham, SBS World News.